Okay, so what we're going to take a look at is how we can practically find the resistance of a component. So essentially what we need to do is build ourselves a circuit like this. Because what we need to remember is if we want to find resistance, we need to know the potential difference divided by current. So you can see we've got this voltmeter in here, which will allow us to measure the potential difference across this resistor. And we've got an ammeter in here that measures the current going through it. Now I could have put the ammeter over here, here, here. It doesn't matter because this is a series circuit. So the current's the same everywhere anyway. So I've decided to put the ammeter here. So you might be wondering why there's a variable resistor in here. So the reason I've got this is it's gonna allow me to change the size of the current in our circuit because I want to stop the current getting too high because if the current gets high, the circuit can get very hot and then that can change the resistance of this component. So this is here to essentially control the temperature in the circuit and make sure it doesn't change. So, that, so temperature is one of our control variables in this experiment. Um, so let's actually do this and collect some data. Um, so let's just adjust our camera a little bit. So you can see I've got the equipment I need. So uh, without further ado, let's actually put this to work. So we've got our battery. Um, our ammeter, we're using one of these um, analog type ones. Um, I'm going to put it on quite a high shunt to start with because I don't know how the big the current's going to be at this point. I might change that a bit later on. Uh, we've got a voltmeter as well. And then I've got uh, this component here, which essentially I don't know the resistance of. It's just a load of wire wrapped up. And we're going to measure what its resistance is. So let's plug that in. We've got our variable resistor over here. Um, so let's get everything set up. So generally speaking, these are where I'm going to put my components in this kind of arrangement here. It's always a good idea just to kind of set your equipment out before you even start putting any wires in. Um, so when I'm doing this, I always put the voltmeter in last, uh, so then I don't have to worry about it. Uh, so let's plug our variable resistor in. Um, everyone always gets het up about the colors of wires, really doesn't matter. Um, and I'm going to in terms of this, I'm going to plug in, you also, you always plug into this red one at the top. So I'm going to start off by plugging into this top one here, because I don't know how big the current is, so I'm putting it on its maximum range. I'm least likely to actually damage this uh, component. So let's do that now. Let's plug into the 5. Goes into the 6. And let's come around the other way. Okay. So before I start thinking about the voltmeter, just something I want to show you. So we can see that we've got a slight deflection here and it's gone to the right. So I actually plugged this in the right way around, which is always nice. Um, if you plug these two the wrong way around for this setting, you'll notice it deflects to the left. So we have to do the opposite of that. So we want it to deflect to the right because you can see we've got a really nice big range going over to the right hand side. And we see that the current is actually quite small here. So um, this is on this scale, this is currently reading, so we're on the bottom scale, about half an amp there, which means I'm safe to change down onto this one, because this one you can go up to one amp safely on. So I'm, I'm perfectly safe to change that one. So now we're reading on the top scale, so 10 is one amp. So then that means, what's this? This is 5.2, so that's 0 0.52 amps there. Okay, so that, that's all now set up correctly. Uh, so that's all grand. We've got a bit of spare wires which we can chuck. And the last thing we need to do is get our voltmeter in. And so voltmeters are nice and easy. We always plug them in parallel. So just give yourself two wires into your voltmeter like this. And we want to measure the potential difference across our resistor. So I'm going to plug it in each of these ends here. So let's do that. Okay. So now what we can see is we've got a potential difference reading and we've got a current reading. Now what I can do is I can change those values. So if I change this variable resistor, the potential difference reading and this current reading have changed, but I haven't changed the resistance of this actual component itself. Its resistance is decided by it alone and its temperature. Um, so I can play around here. I can give myself smaller or bigger currents or smaller or bigger potential differences, which gives me a way of doing repeat readings, which is quite nice. 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, I'm going to put this on a few different settings and we're actually going to measure its resistance. So let's do that. So I'll start with it up here. So um, as we record these, so note these down as you're watching. It's always useful to have some dummy data here. Um, so you can notice the voltmeter is doing is being very annoying. It's flicking, flickering around. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to look and see what value is it kind of fluctuating around. So to me, this is fluctuating about uh, 1.6. Uh, so I've got our potential difference measured in volts. So the first one I reckon is 1.60. Let's have a look at our ammeter. So I reckon that's 2.2 on the scale. So that's 0.22 amps. So um, I've got that recorded in a little table on my piece of paper here. So you can see I've just drawn myself a little table. So we've got a potential difference and a current. So let's change our variable resistance, give ourselves some new values. Um, so on there, again, it's flickering around a little bit. Let's let it settle down. To me, I reckon that's flickering around sort of 2.08. We don't have to worry about it too much, the 2.08. Let's get our ammeter. I would say that's on 2.8. So then that's a current of 0.28. So these are quite similar. So let's get one final reading here. We don't need to go crazy. Let's go. Actually, let's go all the way to the end. Why not? Okay, so our voltmeter reading. That I would say is flickering around. Ooh, that one's quite flickering quite a lot. Okay, maybe I've got a little bit of a loose connection somewhere. Let's just try and stabilize that a little bit. There we go. Uh, I'd say that's been flickering around 4.20. Let's not go crazy, I'm trying to be super. And if we look at our scale, I would say that's on exactly 6.0. So that's 0 0.60 amps. So you can see that essentially we've got ourselves some data and we can uh, calculate ourselves some values for the resistance there. Okay, so let's actually do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add us a column onto our table for resistance. Okay, and in the because of the ma magical world of video, you can see I've instantly produced that column and done the calculations. So these are the three values of resistance I got for this component. And I took an average of those three and that, so we reckon the average is about 7.2, uh, which is interesting. I think I thought these were about five, uh, but there we go. That, that's what we've got in this particular circuit there.